Rule-based authorization is the cornerstone of any user-moderated site. A good example is Stack Overflow, which provides users various privileges based on the amount of reputation that they've gained on the site. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use Angular 5 and Firestore to build your own role-based authorization feature. My goal is to give you a solution that is both flexible and secure on the front end and the back end. It works by assigning a role to a user that's saved in Firestore. Then that role is used to lock down certain actions in Angular. The default role is a subscriber, which only has the ability to read data. Then we have an editor that can read and update data. And of course, an admin user that can read, update, create, and delete. If you're brand new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, and you can follow along with the source code at angularfirebase.com. I'm starting from a brand new Angular app with Angular Fire 2 installed. You can find the install instructions on the official repo. The first thing I'm going to do is generate a core module to isolate all the logic for authentication and authorization. Then inside that module, I'm going to generate a service called the auth service. Now, before we get into the actual auth code, I want to warn you that I'm going to go through it very quickly because I covered it in episode 55, which was Firestore OAuth. If you get lost, refer back to that, but let's quickly review the sign-in, sign-up process. First, I'm going to import our Angular Fire libraries, and then I'm going to define a custom user interface. But before we define the user, let's actually define our roles. As I mentioned before, the three roles that we have are subscriber, editor, and admin. The roles will be saved as an object in Firestore, with each possible role being set to a Boolean value. This allows you to assign multiple roles to a single user if that's what you desire. Then on the user itself, we'll just have a user ID and email, and then the roles property will be set to this roles object interface. Let's go ahead and switch back to the service, and then we can set up an observable that is typed to this user interface. To authenticate a user and use that Firestore document, we'll first listen to the Angular Fire auth state, and once we get that, we can then retrieve the actual user document from Firestore. So if the user is defined, then we'll pull that document from Firestore and call value changes to get it as an observable. Otherwise, we'll just return an observable of null. From there, we need a way for the user to authenticate. So we're just going to use Google OAuth for this example. And when the user successfully authenticates, we're going to run this update user data method. The purpose of that method is to create or update the user document in Firestore. The way we do that is we create a reference to the actual user document with the authentication user ID, and then we can set up an object here typed to our user with a default role of subscriber. Then we can update this data without actually overriding it by calling the reference set and then pass it the merge true option. This will create or update the existing document in a non-destructive way. So at this point we have a basic authentication system, but we still don't have any role-based rules in our app. What I've done is created a couple extra components here. This one happens to pull some data from Firestore, and we'll set up rules that prevent the user from updating or deleting this post. The test post just has some content and a title property. Then I set up another component called the super secret component that's only for admin users, and that's where we keep all of our Bitcoins. The way I like to implement role-based authorization is to create a set of abilities and then assign those abilities various roles that are authorized to perform them. What I'm doing first is creating a helper method that takes the user and the allowed roles from one of these abilities, and we'll check and see if the user has the appropriate role to perform it. So if the user is not defined, then we'll just return false. Otherwise, we're going to loop over the allowed roles, and if the user has that role, then we can return true. Otherwise, we'll just return false. Now, I'm going to define the abilities right here in the service, but you could extract this out into its own class if you have a really complex set of roles and abilities. So the first one is can read, and this will determine if a user can read a document or not. So right now the admin, editor, and subscriber all have access to read. As you'll see later, we can use this method to easily hide or block content in our components or in a router guard to easily control access throughout the application. Now we can repeat this pattern for whatever abilities that we want to provide to these roles. So I'll go ahead and create another one here for can edit. And then I'll create one more for can delete, which is only allowed to be performed by the admin user. Keep in mind that anything you do in Angular only provides front-end security. It would be trivial to reverse engineer and circumvent these rules. So before we do anything on the front-end, we're going to write some back-end rules in Firestore that will guarantee data security. What we want to see is this Firestore error whenever we try to read or write any unauthorized data. Currently, I don't have any security on the test post in my Firestore rules in the Firebase console. 
but I'm going to use the git method to retrieve a document from the Firestore database based on this request auth user ID. So that authenticated user's document is going to have the roles object, so we can read the data, then look at the roles, and for the subscriber, we want to make sure that that value is true. In other words, if the current user tries to read this document, but they don't have the subscriber role, then it's going to block access to that document. The one glaring problem here is that this line is super long, and it's going to get completely out of control if we try to repeat it for multiple roles. Luckily, Firestore rules allow you to write functions, so we can write this in a much more readable and expressive way. I'm going to create this get role function that takes the role as a string as an argument. Then I'm going to repeat that whole get line that I wrote just a second ago, but instead of calling subscriber, we'll call the argument from this function. Now we can just delete the previous rule and we can rewrite it using this function. So we'll say if get role with the subscriber role and that should equal true. Then we can do the same thing for the editor and admin roles as well. And we can lock these down based on the type of operation. So we can say allow update if get role editor equals true. And then for admin, we'll say allow create or delete if the admin role equals true. Now I'm going to go into Firestore on the user document and update their editor role to true. Then I'm going to log into the app. And if I try to delete a page, I should still get an error because they don't have the admin privilege. However, if this user performs an update, then it goes through in Firestore and doesn't trigger any kind of error in the console. That's how you keep your data 100% secure in Firestore, but it's better if we never have to trigger these rules in the first place. Now I am jumping over to a component called subscribe page, and this is where we're pulling the actual test post from Firestore. So I have a reference and a post observable, and then I have a variable for the user itself. If you want to lock down a specific method in the component, you can subscribe to the user during ng on init, and then use it to lock down certain code based on whatever users have that ability. I'm going to create a couple methods here, one to edit a post and another to delete a post. Then if you want to lock down a method based on a certain ability, you can just do if can edit and pass it the user object. Then just wrap the important part inside of this if statement. That's one way to use the auth service, but it's actually a lot easier if you perform this logic inside of the template itself. In most cases, you have buttons or other elements that the user will interact with to trigger some kind of method. We can just hide these elements from the DOM using ngif and our auth service, and that's usually a much more maintainable way to go. But there's actually still an even better mechanism that we can use in Angular to prevent unauthorized access to content. And that's with a router guard to lock down certain routes based on the user's role. So first I'm going to create a guard called the admin guard and add that to the core module. Inside the guard, I'm going to import our auth service as well as tap, map, and take from RxJS. Then the auth service is injected in the constructor, and we're going to return an observable from this guard inside of can activate. And it's important that you map this observable to a Boolean. So first we'll call pipe, and then we'll pipe in a few Rx operators here. First one is take one to prevent a running subscription. Then inside of map, we'll see if the user object exists, and if so, we'll also check for the user roles object for the admin property. Then we'll do a ternary if statement here and return true if true, otherwise false. Then we can use the tap operator, which recently replaced the do operator, to console log an error if the user is trying to access an unauthorized area, but you could also use the router here to redirect the user to a different route. So this is going to lock down a route based on a certain role, but we can also lock down route on a certain ability. Because if you remember, multiple roles can be assigned to a specific ability. All of the code's exactly the same, we just have to change one thing down here in the map operator. So instead of looking at the actual role itself, we'll pass the user to the can read method from our auth service, and that will authorize any roles that can read a document. To put these guards to use, we'll go into the router, and then we'll import the guards and add them to the can activate array in each of the route objects. If you can lock things down at the route level, it's going to simplify your code base overall, and it also has the added benefit of not requiring a read in Firestore to see if a rule evaluates to true or false. As you can see here, we have an unauthenticated user, and they are denied access to any of these pages just based on the router guard. Then if we log in with the editor role, we can go to the main content page, but the admin page is still locked down. So on a final note, just to sum up the bottom line, you should be using backend Firestore rules for your actual data security, 
and then on the front end use router guards and additional logic to enhance the user experience. That's it for role-based access control with Firestore. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to exclusive content, a free copy of my book, and one-on-one -on -one project support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.